Now, we all live in a world of gaming where grindy gameplay has become the very big norm. It wasn't as much so long ago with the games trying their best to offer unique gameplay, but grind isn't always bad, of course. Certain MMOs like ESO and WoW show that grind can be done pretty well if it feels rewarding. Also, RPGs like the Elder Scrolls series, Fallout, and The Witcher offer the same gameplay over and over again with minor twists. It's all about the rewards, but unfortunately, Today, oof, today I just finished the first big DLC of Borderlands Remastered on PC and boy oh boy, will I never ever play through this DLC again, you know? <laughs> let, let me show you. Just look at this clip here. My objective is to get brains, something you only get by killing a zombie. Okay, I got all the brains. You return, right, to get a good reward. Well, I got a reward, alright. <laughs> it's goddamn awful. Oh, but more brains to collect, and more brains to collect, and even more brains to collect. Yeah, I'll talk about what I don't like near the end, alright, so stick around for that. But let's have a wee chat about this DLC. So today, I will be going over my experience with the Zombie Island of Dr. Ned, and where I personally think it went wrong. Of course, the game is 10 years old and Gearbox have long since proved they can do better, but let me talk about my experience with what I think is the grindiest DLC I think I have ever played, ever. But let's start with a synopsis for all you feckers that have no idea what the heck is going on right now. The Zombie Island of Dr. Ned was the first released DLC for Borderlands 1 for about $10 and served to give the player even more to do after they finished the base game or just some more content in general cuz content rules. The DLC offered a brand new area, Jacob's Cove, for players to explore with multiple other areas within it. Places like Dead Haven, an undead version of Old Haven, and the Hollow's End, an area holding undead TK Baja. There's around 25 missions for you to complete because who doesn't love seeing more claptrap? There's a bunch of new enemies, a new claptrap rescuing for more item slots and you need to be level 10 to do it. So there's your synopsis for the DLC. Let's have a look into its story, which you know, it's about zombies, so don't expect the most compelling story told DLC since the creation of sliced bread. Hey, don't diss it. Bread is great. I did this DLC around level 42 onwards on my second playthrough, so remember this when you see me blasting my way through the enemies like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> I am death incarnate. Uh, <clears throat> or, uh, I just, I like games. Also, spoilers for this DLC story after this sentence onwards. Skip to about two to three minutes from now, or even just a minute. If you know want spoilers, don't say I didn't warn you. Are you still watching? Good. Okay, let me tell you the story. So it starts with Marcus telling the story to a young child who keeps interrupting and asking questions, which leads Marcus to bullying the poor child by calling him an orphan. It's kind of funny. On this island, Dr. Ned, who isn't Dr. Zed, Remember that. It's it's not Dr. Zed. He alongside you are helping the Jacobs Weapons Company save the employees who are stuck in the zombie infested place. After helping a couple of claptrap units, Dr. Ned, do some quests and figuring out some stuff, you realize it's Dr. Ned who has been turning people into zombies. Plot twist. Cause that's way better way to keep people alive. <laughs> you know, keep them alive <laughs> by making them dead. You end up fighting your way through the lumber mill, killing Ned, credits roll, but in typical Borderlands fashion, it just doesn't end there. He's not dead and he comes back in his second form, significantly more stronger. Oof. You kill second Dr. Ned and whoop, you were victorious and all the loot in the world is yours and yeah, that's it. There really isn't anything too special about the story. It's just kind of there to give a forefront for more loot hoarding. So let's have a wee talk about the loot in the DLC. Because who doesn't want to discover rare new loot and all that kind of good stuff? The stuff you come to Borderlands for, am I right? Well, there is a mention of rare loot in the synopsis for the DLC, so I assumed, like a lot of others who I seen say the same thing on some forum posts, for that the DLC might have some unique named weapons to farm, but it doesn't. Or not what I've found or anyone else seems to have found either. The zombies are fun to farm, but lose their touch very fast and drop crap stuff 90% of the time. You have other types of zombies which seem to have the same amount of good loot as Anthem does, which is none. Zero. 
that's the number before one in case you didn't know. The only zombies I found worth looking out for are the loot goons which are tank and stein enemies but with big giant loot chests on their back. So if you are trying to get something decent, look, you might as well just farm them. There's a couple of bosses like Dr. Ned and Pumpkinhead but again there is no unique weapons to farm. You might get some higher tier decent weapons but the chances are pretty low. Dr. Ned doesn't respawn and I haven't gone back to check if Pumpkinhead does but he's such a tanky enemy it just feels a lot like Borderlands base game does. I feel my chances are pretty low and the best course of action is to just keep looting the goons for some sweet stuff. The Jacob's weapons boxes had some cool stuff there that you could purchase you know here and there but nothing too special. I found that using this DLC to level up was very helpful. I leveled up about seven to eight times doing this on my second playthrough just because there were so many zombies to kill which felt pretty awesome not gonna lie but if you were playing through this DLC for something special to give to your character I would advise against it because the DLCs you can farm for good stuff I'll be covering soon after this one so don't you worry the loot will come and the loot will be absolutely awesome I can feel it in my trigger fingers all the guns I can possess to kill enemies over and over again so yeah, as the video is titled, this DLC is so goddamn grindy, like I know the game is old, but unless I'm blind or I just miss something, there is no quick way to get from one area to another without running there. The areas are huge too, so every time you want to go somewhere, you have to run all the way across the main hub to get to one of them, then run through that area to another thing to do. I'll give you the best example I have. The worst side mission I think I have ever done is the brain side quest for Undead TK Baha. It's left such a sour taste in my mouth for this character now because it's pretty dumb but also isn't dumb but let me let me explain all right the quest itself if found early can just be passively completed as you go through the rest of the dlc you need to collect brains from zombies to give to tk baha which in turn will get him to spit out a weapon here's the thing you have four or five to do for him you start off by getting 10 brains i think and it moves up eventually having you get 250 brains for one 250 is an insane number and especially when it's so slow to get them you will only get brains by by headshot killing zombies so make sure to use a shotgun or a precise sniper or something whatever it is aim for the head that's how you get the brains and you need to get so many but here's my two major gripes which make it so horrendously slow tk baja is in the furthest possible point at the back of hollow's end so you have to run there every time you finish one of these quests which is horrible then he will drop loot every time you feed him but rng will either be with you or against you for me it took a huge dump on my head because i'm playing brick and forget 250 brains i got an assassin class mod yeah i can't use it it just wasn't fun and it felt like a huge waste of time in my opinion because the rewards were just not worth it i could have made the money somewhere else and the xp was great but again i can make it somewhere else all the areas felt monotonous and boring quite quickly to run across after the first time everything is pretty dreary and dull looking and the same three types of zombies appear with the odd random uh, tankenstein here and there don't get me wrong i had fun running around doing it all I spent about six plus hours doing this DLC for ten dollars at the time I can't imagine you would have complained much and I got a DLC for free for owning Borderlands anyway But still the elements did not age well of course future DLCs and future games proved Gearbox knew this stuff was awful But this particular DLC just came across as mediocre to me And I don't think I'll do it again in the future for other characters unless I want XP uh, I'm bored or I happen to want to play Fortnite for some reason so the pros of this DLC are it adds tons of new areas, there's new enemies giving a fresh feeling to the base game, some cool characters like Dr. Ned who isn't Dr. Zed, Steve the guy who says hey oh, and the spook crew making fun of Scooby Doo. Cons, the areas are way too slow to run around ruining the pacing of the DLC in the game, the loot rewards are just not worth it, or the hassle you have to go through, and claptraps in it. Yeah, that will forever be a con to me. But yeah, if you want some new content and you just purchased the Borderlands Remastered and you're deciding whether or not to try it out, I, I would advise not giving it a shot. That would be the choice I would say here. There's plenty more ways for you to level up and stuff. If you absolutely are curious, there's a couple of quests here and there, you know, some cool enemies to fight. But uh, overall, I'd say stay away from it. It's pretty, pretty mediocre, unless you really are desperate for some content. There's three other DLCs, and I've heard, you know, the other two are pretty good. But yeah, I decided with this video that we'd adapt a bit on the hardest decisions 
points and decide whether or not you should do certain DLCs in Borderlands because Borderlands a hot topic right now. So, you know, I do hope you enjoy listening to me talk about this. But this has been my analysis for the first DLC pack for Borderlands 1. I'll be doing it as well for the other three DLCs, so look out for them. And if you did get Borderlands Remastered, are you having fun with it? If yes, tell me why in the comments below. If not, tell me why in the comments below. I love hearing what you guys think of all sorts of things with gaming. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like as it always helps me. And if you didn't like it, leave a dislike. Any sort of rating helps out my channel. If you did watch this video, I thank you. I find it hard to try out other content sometimes, but this was just something I wanted to give a gander at. It was fun to make and I would love to branch out more in the future. So please do leave any sort of feedback. Anyways, guys, enough babble. I hope you all have a wonderful day, week, month, or year. And I will see you all next time.